Every great work leaves some pages on the cutting room floor. These books just didn't make the cut for the good book. We're counting down the 10 rejected books of the Bible. Raising a baby is hard. Raising baby Jesus would have been a whole other story, specifically the infancy gospel. The New Testament as we know it today only features one story about Jesus as a child, which shows him at the age of 12 in the Gospel of Luke. The infancy gospel of Thomas worked to fill in Jesus' coming of age gaps with a loose collection of stories about his childhood and adolescent years. The book dates back to the second or third century and was originally written in Greek. Unfortunately, it was wrongly attributed to the disciple Thomas and has never been considered as official scripture. Today, scholars are beginning to accept this text, not as a book of scripture, but as a historical source that provides a glimpse into how early Christians may have pondered what it might have been like to raise the Son of God. Ever wondered what Adam and Eve got up to after they hightailed it out of the Garden of Eden? The book of Adam and Eve has all the unofficial answers. Believed to have been first written in Arabic by an unknown Egyptian writer a few hundred years after the birth of Christ, the book tells the story of Adam and Eve's life in the Cave of Treasures. The story follows the couple's trials and temptations as Satan appears to them after they get booted from the Garden of Eden, as well as the births and early childhood of Cain and Abel and their twin sisters. The book is considered the equivalent of historic biblical fan fiction, known as pseudopigraphia, which carries a bit of stigma. While it is not included in the Holy Bible, parts of the text can also be found in the Jewish Talmud and the Islamic Quran. Another historic biblical fanfic, you know, the pseudepigraphia, is the Book of Enoch, written one to two centuries before the birth of Christ. This book boasts a whopping 108 chapters spread across five sections and covers juicy new materials such as the origins of demons and angel-human hybrids called Nephilim. Trilogy alert, there are two other books in the Enoch series, Secrets of Enoch, aka the second book of Enoch, and the third book of Enoch, aka the third book of Enoch. As far as scholars are concerned, absolutely no one believes the Book of Enoch was written by the same Enoch we know from the Book of Genesis as Noah's grandfather. The unfortunate truth is the Book of Enoch was never referred to as scripture by Jesus or any of the writers of the New Testament. Book of Enoch? Never heard of her. Considered lost until a German librarian in the 17th century rediscovered it, the Psalms of Solomon is another pseudepigraphial work that didn't quite make the cut for the Bible. Originally written in Hebrew around 70 CE, Psalms of Solomon is made up of 18 psalms that contain hymns, poems, and songs expressing admonition, instruction, thanksgiving, lamentation, and a belief in resurrection and free will. The Psalms recount the Jewish community's persecutions during the first century BCE and tries to explain why God would allow his devout followers to suffer such acts. Not exactly a feel-good read. <laughs> Found among the same thought-to-be-lost manuscripts as the Psalms of Solomon is the Odes of Solomon. Talk about an eye-catching original title. The Odes are a collection of 42 Syriac hymns, most likely originally written in Greek or Aramaic. Unlike the Psalms, the Odes appeared less clearly Jewish and more identifiably Christian in origin, and it's believed that they may have been the songs of newly baptized Christians from the first century. The songs reference Jesus and the Holy Trinity, as well as the ideas of virgin birth and the harrowing of hell. You might want to slap a parental advisory sticker on this album, as the odes also contain some highly questionable and potentially offensive passages. The odes were at one time considered part of the Christian canon, but today scholars believe it may have actually come from a Jewish Christian sect or a heretical or Gnostic group. The Letter of Aristides was written in Alexandria, Egypt around the second century BCE at a time when the Jewish community struggled with internal conflict. The letter gives a contemporary account of the Hebrew Pentateuch, which would later become the first five books of the Bible. 
It was written to portray Judaism favorably to non-Jews and to encourage the Hellenistic Jews to strictly observe the laws of Judaism. The letter itself claims to be written by Aristes, a pagan admirer of Judaism who held a high position in the court of Ptolemy II Philadelphus in the 3rd century BCE. However, the use of specific Alexandrian language and concern for Jewish subject matter indicate that it was most likely written by an Alexandrian Jew pretending to be Aristes in order to promote Judaism among his local community. Ah, the Maccabees, tale as old as roughly 161 BCE. The first, second, and fourth books of the Maccabees are not fully accepted as canonical scriptures of the Bible. The first two books are part of canonical scripture in Catholicism, but are rejected in the Protestant Church and the Jewish Torah. They cover detailed accounts of Judah Maccabee and his brothers' fight to liberate Judea from foreign domination and include some of the earliest known written references to the story of Hanukkah. Four Maccabees was most likely written during the reign of Caligula, around 37 to 41 CE, and contains unreliable historic information and is only included in the Maccabees series because it mentions the beginning of the persecution of Jews by Antiochus IV of Epiphanes. No one knows exactly why this book was excluded from canonical scripture, but some suspect that the Jews thought it was written too late or possibly that Martin Luther rejected its positive portrayal of religious freedom. The story of Ahikar is one of the most ancient sources of human thought and wisdom, and it was not included in the Bible. Most likely because it contains no uniformity in detail. Looks like we might have another pseudepigraphial fanfic on our hands. The text was rescued from the Arabian Nights and restored to the Biblical Apocrypha, then lost to time. It was later rediscovered and edited to include details found on a series of papyrus fragments from the island of Elephantine, dating back to the 5th century BCE. Much like the tale of Job, the story of Ahikar tells of a wise and moral man whose righteousness is tested by betrayal and ultimately rewarded by God. Numerous translations indicate that the story was popular in antiquity and it influenced the development of Jewish wisdom in literature. It just didn't quite make the cut for the Bible. Largely tossed away because its text contradicts other texts in both Christianity and Judaism, the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs claims to be documentation of the last words of the Twelve Sons of Jacob, the founders of the Twelve Tribes of Israel, as told to each of their sons. The Testaments are essentially an imitation of the blessing of Jacob found in chapter 49 of Genesis, which outlines the final words of Jacob to his sons before his death. Sound a bit derivative? Each of the 12 essays contains an autobiography of the patriarch, an advisory warning against his specific vice, such as anger and lying, as well as a prophecy that predicts the fate of the patriarch's sons. The Testaments contain lengthy moral exhortations and specifically contains references to Jesus, which are rejected by both Jewish and Christian doctrines. While Ezra managed to get a spot in the Bible, not all of his related work did. The books of Estrus 1 and 2 are associated with Ezra, who also authored the Old Testament Book of Ezra, though it's not known if Ezra wrote Estrus 1 and 2. The Old Testament Book of Ezra was at one time known as Estrus 1, and the two rejected books we are referring to here were known as Estrus 3 and 4. But now, numbers 3 and 4 are known as 1 and 2, and the original number 1 is known as the Book of Ezra. It's confusing, we know. Let's move on. The Book of Estrus 1 was found in a collection of writings known as the Apocrypha, and the Book of Estrus 2 is a pseudepigraphical apocalyptic work. Much about these texts are unknown, including their origin, original language, and date of writing, which is roughly estimated to have occurred between the 1st and 2nd centuries CE. Most churches have rejected these books from the biblical canon due to their fixation on certain moral and religious ideas more than Jewish historical facts. Who knew that the Bible sent out so many rejection letters? Did we miss any almost holy works of fact or fiction? Let us know in the comments below.